I think all of us are familiar with the jingle. I won't waste 25 more seconds to play it, but I will start today out and welcome you to Sin7's Daily Double, our Jeopardy themed uh, webinar series. This is number one of four. So get very excited for the rest of them. I'm gonna start by introducing your host today. So uh, first and foremost, we've got Sierra Rogers with us today. She is Sin7's Senior Product Manager. She is your ERP and IMS expert. She has 13 years in tech and she runs Sin7's Customer and Partner Product Advisory Councils. So plenty of information, plenty of knowledge to share with you today. Then we've got Zoe Zoaki. She is Sin7's Project Manager. She's got uh, about five years of experience and she is Sin7's own daily double because she has experience in customer success and platform growth. She's gonna be able to tell you uh, great ways to grow your business and how to boost platform performance. And then me, I am gonna be your clue master today. My name is Lauren Cassidy. I'm a part of Sin7's marketing team and I'm here to keep the questions flowing, the competition fierce and the game as exciting as ever. So with that, let's get into the rules of the game. There are gonna be polls that are gonna populate throughout this game. You can take your best guess. Uh, the answers will not be public, so don't worry. Um, and also, as we're going through, you can, and you might have questions about some of the topics that we go through. There is a Q&A function at the bottom. Feel free to use that, ask any questions that you might have. If for some reason we don't get to your question today, we will follow up with you after today. Just to get things exciting and to start, get the ball rolling, I'm gonna do a practice poll right now. So there should be a poll popping up for you. The question is, if you could rename the Daily Double, what would you call it? A, the Double Trouble, B, the Risky Biscuit, C, the Wild Guess Express, or D, the Brain Buster. I see we've got some answers popping in. I'll give you fun. just another second. These are fun. Thank I'm not going to say my answer. I don't want to influence anybody. <laughs> I will absolutely influence other people. The risky biscuit, biscuit, are you kidding? That's hilarious. All right. So now everyone understands um, the Wild Guess Express is the winner, which is really surprising to me. I'm very team risky biscuit. So that's okay. I agree with the rest of you but now you understand how this will work today. We are gonna dive into our board. We've got three categories for you today. We're not getting too wild. We kept it all at $100, but we're gonna start with our first category, AI and inventory management. So this is your first clue. This technology predicts future inventory needs using historical data, market trends, and consumer behavior. There's your poll, and we'll give you a few seconds to get going. All right, hopefully that was enough time. I see we've got a good amount of answers coming in. So I'm gonna end our poll, and I'm gonna give you the result, the answer. That is, what is AI for demand forecasting? Um, I am going to lean or hand this over to Sierra to start talking to us about what this means. Sierra, can you talk to us about AI for demand forecasting? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I did actually like the answer, um, or I guess the question is like, what is the eight ball? You know, like I, a magic eight ball. Um, and whenever people talk to me about AI for uh, demand forecasting, you know, I joke that we're not just using magic eight balls to forecast what your sales are going to be, but it is really about predicting what your sales orders are going to look like and predicting how much inventory and stock you need to supply those sales orders. So, <clears throat> pardon me. So businesses, unfortunately, sometimes run into one of two costly mistakes when we're talking about making sure you have enough inventory to meet your demand. 
<clears throat> the inventory is really this balance between how much stock you have on your shelves and then how many sales orders are coming in. Maybe it's through Shopify or Amazon or it's phone calls or it's a B2B site. However, your, your orders are coming in, you want to make sure that you don't either run out of stock, which is a stock out or maybe an understock. Uh, because then you're missing sales opportunities. But you also don't want to overstock your products and have too many sitting on the shelves because then it's just collecting dust. It, maybe you're paying rent at a 3PL for that shelf space. Um, but at the end of the day, it's tying up your capital so that you can't invest back into your business. Maybe it's with diversifying your product offering or hiring more people. Either way, your money is better spent in those places. So the primary purpose behind an AI-driven demand forecasting tool is that it focuses on predicting the customer needs by analyzing that historical data, like you mentioned in the clue, maybe it's sales patterns, uh, potentially it's seasonality. Um, like you're you're probably going to see uh, seasonality in things like water bottles, for example. So you're going to sell more of those in the summertime, but also like right around New Year's resolution time, right? People always say they want to drink more water. So by using an AI tool, it will actually notice that seasonality and uh, predict and tell you or inform you or suggest to you, hey, you want to increase your water bottle stock um, during these seasons and these times. But AI, the core idea here is that the AI-driven demand forecasting is anticipating both what you need to be purchasing and how much inventory that supply you need to put on the shelves so that you're meeting those sales orders, that demand. So how does AI do this? It's constantly analyzing and reviewing and learning about your data, about your sales orders, about your products. Uh, maybe it's the lead time from your suppliers, all of these different data points, it's consuming it and then it's making those predictions and those suggestions. So it learns really quick the products that are selling really well, and it's also learning the products that are not selling so great. And it'll tell you, uh, or it'll suggest to you to maybe adjust some of your, your reorder points um, to, to make sure that you're stocking at the appropriate levels. So you've got that balance uh, of your inventory. So the differentiator here is that AI is used before you order your stock or maybe you're moving your stock from location to location, or maybe you're manufacturing your products, but you can use AI before you do all of those to, to supply your shelves. And a key benefit here is that AI is doing this all in real time. So as your sales orders come in, as your consumer, uh, their, their buying patterns shift and change, the system is going to adjust the forecasts and the suggestions for your inventory levels to really keep you and your business agile. So that sounds great, Sierra, and very exciting, but it, you know, not to be too game show, it almost sounds too good to be true. Like, wait, there's more. Um, I think for me, what I would really love to understand is, you know, is there specific businesses that this is really meant for? You know, it, it is too good to be true and it's only for this type of business or can you kind of dive into what that should look like what business needs or could be filled with this yeah absolutely so i am going to start with like a really big box example but then i'll apply it as well to small and medium-sized businesses as well so um, walmart for example they use ai and it's because they're trying to predict over 500 million products every week. They're trying to figure out how to balance their stock levels so that they've got the right amount of, of uh, products on the shelf. <clears throat> and they found by using AI, they are one, probably much more responsive, much more agile, uh, but they have their accuracy honed into like an 85% accuracy rating, meaning they don't have a lot of products that are collecting dust and they don't have a lot of products that are are sold out that, that are you know having stock outs. So that's a big example of one. But whenever we look at, at studies, uh, businesses are reporting that they're using AI for forecasting and it's helping them with 30% lower inventory cost, meaning they're not having as much stock sitting on the shelf collecting dust 
awesome. And they're getting even more accurate, much like Walmart, to like a 20 to 50% better accuracy rating, meaning that they are investing in the right products, the right amount, and they've got more capital in their pocket to grow their business. So what I'm hearing is that AI could be a good fit for many businesses. So I am excited to dive into our next category. Uh, that is going to be uh, AI in business. So let's go ahead and get to the clue. This technology helps optimize inventory by determining the right amount of stock to keep on hand. Oh, this is the wrong poll. Pardon me. Sorry, guys. Got too excited. This is the right one. Give you a couple extra seconds on that one because of my mistake, but I will end the poll and say an overwhelming amount of you felt strongly, had the same opinion for this one, and in fact, did get it right. Uh, it is, what is AI-driven inventory management? So Sierra, let's tap into this category. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Uh, talk me through inventory optimization, inventory management. Yeah, absolutely. So in, in the history of inventory management, people are probably used to using spreadsheets, which was one of the, the answers there, um, to manage all of their inventory. But now we don't have to rely on just spreadsheets and our own brain power, um, maybe a couple of really good functions and, you know, uh, and all of that in spreadsheets to really predict not only how much the, the stock we needed to order, which was the last one, but when we should be reordering it. Right. So AI for inventory optimization or for inventory management is all about identifying the right reorder points for your products and then how much to reorder. This um, can help you, again, avoid that overstock or that stock out problem like we were talking about earlier. So the purpose here is that inventory optimization is about maintaining that right amount of stock at any given time. So it goes beyond demand forecasting like we were just talking about by dynamically adjusting those reorder points and those stock levels that are based on your current inventory and real-time conditions, those sales orders that are coming in. So for example, let's say you sell those water bottles like I talked about. Um, you might see seasonality around uh, the summertime. It gets really hot out, everybody needs their water, so they're gonna be buying more water bottles then. And then they're also gonna see spikes right around New Year's for those New Year's resolutions. Um, in the past, you would have to know, okay, this is my busy season, I need to adjust my levels. Now with AI, it'll look and see like, oh, your sales are increasing. Therefore, your inventory is decreasing at such a rate. You need to order more water bottles now so that you don't have a stock out. And instead of ordering, I don't know, 100 that you're used to ordering in the past, no, go ahead and order 250 because you're going to sell out of them. And I'm going to factor in that year over year, you've got a 10% increase in business. So I'm as AI, it would be taking in all of these different pieces of information to make suggestions to you on how to make better data-informed, data-driven decisions to benefit your company. Now, AI is a game changer. And I know, sorry, marketing team, like I, I know it's an overused phrase, but it is really a game changer because it's being dynamic. It's doing all of this in real time. Instead of having to rely on manual fixed reorder points, um, the AI is just constantly learning and constantly updating uh, the user based on the, the sales patterns, the trends, the seasonality, et cetera. So it's learning from your data um, and it can predict sometimes those spikes or those drops, right? 
Um, so here's the key differentiator, um, and I've said it a few times, so I'm just nailing it home here, is that it's really focused on managing your inventory in real time. Um, and it's making sure that it takes all that guesswork out of it, all the manual work out of it, and it's really helping you keep your inventory optimized um, for, for your business. Now, this, again, isn't just for big businesses, it's for everybody. There's a Gardner report out there that says that the businesses who are using AI for inventory optimization, they're seeing a 30% reduction in excess inventory. That, that's the overstock we were talking about, where it's just sitting on the shelf collecting dust, right? And again, there are um, uh, companies that are saying they've got a 20 to 30% increase in their stock turnover, which means how quickly they're getting it off off the shelf. So it doesn't even have time to collect dust because it's just going straight out the door, right? So here in short, the AI powered inventory optimization, it really ensures that you've got the right stock at the right time so that you can reduce cost, you've improved your cash flow because it's not tied up in those those products collecting dust and it increases your profitability because if you have overstock, you're going to end up maybe doing things like sales, which honestly that doesn't make you any money. Like you end up losing money by having sales. And it's doing all of this dynamically and in real time so you're not having to do manual processes um, for for all of this. So I hear what you're saying. There's a there's a difference between uh, inventory uh, management and demand forecasting, and that one of them is to plan, and one of them is when it's really happening, and and that's inventory management, inventory optimization. It sounds like that takes a lot of like the the work that maybe people don't want to be doing off the table. They don't have to worry about that anymore. They can focus on other parts of their business, and that sounds. I mean, I don't run a business. But if I did, that would sound real good to me. And that actually leans really well into our next category. This is business operations for 100. This technology streamlines tasks like product descriptions and suggesting purchasing or replenishment orders. I will get this one right this time. And I'll give you all a couple minutes or a couple seconds to answer that. I'm going to go ahead and end the poll. We've got pretty split uh, answers here. The answer is, in fact, what is AI for automate, automating repetitive tasks? So, Sierra, let's talk about it. What does that mean? Yeah. So, and and I think that the the folks who were kind of split there, you're you're kind of both right. If I would I would call in judges on that one. But um, so AI is um, the AI driven automation um, for inventory management. It helps streamline those repetitive tasks like you were talking about, Lauren. So these are things that are like essential to your business, but they're really time consuming tasks. They're things that could be human error prone. Uh, maybe it's preventing your team from focusing on more strategic uh, practices. Projects. So you can use AI to really save time and um, reduce potentially costly mistakes. And it's not just in business. So in my personal life, I use AI almost every day. Uh, ChatGPT helps me eliminate things like writing really polished messages and birthday cards. Uh, I hope none of my family is watching, but yeah, <laughs> all of your birthday cards, uh, ChatGPT helped me write those. Like planning out vacations, like, you know, fun family friendly things to do in this area or uh, meal planning and grocery orders. Like all of these things that typically take me hours to figure out, if not days. Um, now I'm using ChatGPT to help eliminate that human time, right? So now I can focus on more fun things um, like watching Bluey with my toddler. Um, but the primary purpose here is that we use automation to reduce the time that we're spending on these repetitive tasks, right? These routine things that we probably are going, Ugh, whenever we see it on our to-do list. It could be things like stock updates, which if you don't get it right, can really cost you. Could be reordering. Again, if you put an extra zero or a comma or a decimal point in the wrong place, can really cost you. Um, maybe it's creating product descriptions. I know Lauren's in marketing and she loves to write, but if that's not your jam, then you might not want to do that. 
Um, so actually, that's a, a really good example for us to hone in on. So in Sin7 Core, we have this AI feature called Generate with AI. And so you go onto your product page and you actually pull it up and you say, help me generate a product description. And it will give you both a short description and a much longer description that uses all the information about your product that's already there in Sin7 to write a much more, uh, we'll say, verbose uh, description. It's going to have really SEO heavy keywords. So not only are more customers going to find you because it's been SEO optimized, but you're also going to look like the expert of your product because you're talking about all the reasons why your product's great. And it's going to set you apart from your competition because you're probably doing the same thing your competition's doing. You're using the product description that your supplier sends you in that, that uh, product catalog everybody else is doing the same thing. But so by using this generate with AI tool, you're separated from the crowd, more people are finding you, you're making more sales, etc. So, um, so I, I would say that everybody who's using Sin7 Core, you all already have access to this. This is a, a feature that's already in our product today at no extra cost for anybody. Sierra, isn't there a company, Hairco? I, we recently did a story with them and they're, you know, we talked earlier about Walmart and that being a huge store that's using AI, but Hairco is not a Walmart in that they are not that size. And they were able to reduce overstock by 25% using uh, Sin7's AI capabilities. And then they also use those automated uh, product descriptions. And didn't they boost their SEO traffic by like 15%? Yeah, so 15% more people are coming to their website, which means that they've got 15% more opportunity for sales. They've got 15 more percent of, like maybe they're, they're gonna come back. And if they do purchase, they might become a loyal customer and they're gonna purchase more and more frequently. So they're really growing their business by using this simple tool that's free for our customers today. So cool. Uh, Sierra, I know that there was one other example we wanted to talk about specifically that it is probably a pretty well-known company. I might say this wrong, but I do know them. Unilever? Unilever? Yeah. Unilever. So Unilever is that parent company. Uh, they, they're um, the parent company for everybody from Dove to Axe to Ben & Jerry's, one of my favorites, uh, Ponds, Briars, other good one, uh, Tresemme. Um, it, like, the list goes on and on, right? So um, they, they're managing millions of products as well. And they actually use AI to automate their stock replenishments. So their purchase orders. Um, and this is helping reduce their stock shortages by 15%. Again, making sure that they're not overstocked or understocked and they're improving their order efficiency by 30%. So if we think about the millions of products and the, the vast uh, companies that they are managing, you know, by by honing in on this this proper uh, inventory, they're they're probably saving millions, if not dare I say billions, uh, per year. Sounds really good to me, saving millions, if not billions. I would love to see that for myself personally. Um, I think this brings us really well into our next and final category. Um, this is the Sin Seven Daily Double. Let's get into it. Spoiler, it's also our final Jeopardy. We're going to take you through, uh, Zoe is going to take you right now to see uh, AI in action. You know, I, I understand, you know, we've talked a lot about um, what is AI and in inventory management, um, what are the benefits of it, but let's see an example of how we can really use it. Um, today, we are going to be using a Sin7 example, um, and we're going to talk you through it, but Zoe's going to be able to show you what you should be looking for as you consider implementing AI into your business. Zoe? Awesome, thank you for that, Lauren. And thank you for that, Sierra. You set me up and teed me up to just show everything that I need to show in a few minutes. So this is Sin7's AI forecasting and inventory forecasting solution. So once again, once you log in, this is the first thing that you're gonna see. This is the forecast screen. I really like it because if you're like Sierra and you're talking about, I live in Excel sheets, I'm constantly redoing the same thing. This is gonna save you time and money, which we already kind of touched on a little bit. 
And who doesn't like to save that? So when we log in, we're able to see this really awesome graph. On the left-hand side, it's our previous state of our sales order history. And on the right, it's gonna be our future state or otherwise called our forecast. So Inventoro and this forecast AI feature is going to go a lot of off of sales order history data, as well as using AI, as well as using a bunch of algorithms that the smart people on this platform came up with in order to really hone in on that future state of your inventory to match that sales forecast. So what that means is you're not having that stock sitting around, you know, on that 3PL floor like Sierra was chatting about, but you're not, you're also not having those stock outs. What does that mean? Money in your pocket, right? So what's really cool about this as well is because you're no longer having to do that analyzing, you're actually going to be able to make some business analytics decisions. It's going to free up that time to do that, right? So on the top, we're actually able to filter this graph based on specific things we want to look at. For example, this is showing us our entire product catalog, but say we want to see water bottles. We can go ahead and look at cool drinks and we can see our previous sales order history our sales forecast, and we can see that in May and in summer, we're doing really well. Unfortunately, my environment is not picking up those New Year's resolutioners, but we can see in real time that in the future, we're expecting a very similar type of a forecast. However, we are account using that AI, we are accounting for a constantly changing future state. It's going to be minor adjustments that happen all the time because we are having that data constantly being looked at, syncing over to SIN7 so that you really are getting pretty much the finest data points available. And we'll go ahead and click back into all categories. So this is all well and great, right? We can see our AI forecasting, but Sierra also touched on a really good point about repetitiveness of ordering and also maybe sometimes getting it wrong. So if we go over to this replenishment tab, we're gonna see that this is an automated process that's gonna save you time. Like I said, Inventor is here to tell you what to order, when to order, and how much to order, saving you that headache of time. So it's going to show us really clearly what we need to order, when we need to order it, and about how much we need to order. Granted, this software is just a recommendation. You know your business better. There is, you know, that human element interaction with AI. So you're always welcome to override this order proposal. And if you have, you know, say cash flow constraints, this would be the time that you could kind of play with that number a little bit. It's going to show you the inventory you have on hand, again, giving you that real-time data of what's actually happening with your business. Sales forecasting is a forecast, right? It's not always going to be 100%. Maybe it is 83%, which is great if you're looking for Vegas odds. However, if you do find that maybe you are having a maybe a slower sales month than what the forecast is predicting, because of that AI and that minor adjustments, that order proposal is going to change ever so slightly so that you still don't have that excess product on your warehouse floor. Another kind of minor thing is also, or not minor, but we also have what's called winners, chasers, and losers. And this is going to help you even further make business decisions and break down that barrier of having to do that analytics so you can actually see what's a high performing product versus a less performing product. Again, thinking about what is the value of that on your warehouse floor, or should you be marketing something a little bit higher in other aspects of your business? So that's a really quick overview of Inventoro slash Foresight AI, but we will be working um, to deliver this to all of you further. So if you have any questions, I know Lauren and Sierra are going to be distributing my information to talk more about it after the webinar. Yeah, Zoe, thank you so much. There's two things I want to touch on. So one thing you had mentioned is uh, having a interest or having uh, struggles maybe with current cash flow. So just want to point out that one thing that Sin7 does offer is Sin7 Capital um, to our customers, which would be able to help you um, to finance and, and work out other ways to have cash flow when you need it. And then there was a question, and I think it's worth answering, though we have like 40 seconds left can't believe we did this in a half hour, but there is a question I think it's valuable to understand. How much time worth of data do you need to be able to implement something like Foresight AI? Like how long uh, should a person have and is it hurt them if they have uh, maybe not a ton of data to offer? Yeah, so ideally this needs about six months worth of data. Granted, it doesn't necessarily need to be in SIN7. So if you're a fairly new customer and you have that information maybe in a CSV, you're more than welcome to update it. Ideally about two years because 
Inventoro does track seasonality. So we are able to actually see kind of to Sierra's point, you know, that timing of when you should be ordering more product versus less. Therefore, you need a little bit more data in those cases. But it's really just going to impact the sales forecast accuracy, which not a huge deal in some cases. That just means you have a little bit more safety stock. That's super helpful. I think that answers the big questions. I know we went over a ton of information today um, and, you know, hopefully had a little bit of fun with us uh, in this Jeopardy style game. We will be following up with all of you with a recording of this. So if you want to go over something, if you have questions you want to share, please feel free to share it with your friends and colleagues. Um, otherwise, hopefully we will see you next month. And we will be able to dive a little further into another one of our categories. But other than that, thank you all so much for attending. We're one minute over and I feel really good about that. So thanks again, everybody, and have a great day. Thanks. Bye.